wasn't aware the room was going to be this full. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, I've got stage fright. Because, <laughs> because uh, as a judge, I'm used to sitting at the bench where there's something in front of me. And I'm, hold, I'm sitting in the mic, I'm not holding it, but uh, I'm going to do my best. Um, I just want to reflect very uh, lightly on, on access to justice. And I always see access to justice almost in, in literal terms. Finding a way to receive justice. And as Chief Justice, I think that um, I would have succeeded as in, in my role in helping to bring access to justice for everybody in Ghana if we can devise new innovative ways which will ensure that when somebody is looking for justice they will be able to get there whether they will be happy when they receive it or not is another thing because in an adversarial system justice which is where I, in my jurisdiction is an adversarial system justice is done even though somebody loses but what matters is that they lost fairly. And um, I also believe that when we are administering justice, we should not be looking at it only in terms of um, a nice courtroom and uh, in a setting as nice town, but we should be looking at really, firstly, at how many people in the nation who are likely to uh, access justice and at what level are they going to start and finish? In my country, we've got the a, a, a segment of the judiciary we call the well of justice service we call the lower courts. The lower courts are I think they like the county courts, the magistrate courts. In Ghana, we have circuit courts and magistrate courts, and these are the ones who really administer justice to the majority of Ghanaians. And so that's the, really the group one has to be looking at um, serving. Many times when we're talking about justice, we start talking about investors and uh, people like that. Yes, they need justice too. But the people who really need justice are those who are afraid and are uh, oppressed or they've lost something, or they have been dragged to court by somebody in the countryside. Now when they get there, what kind of building are they going to be in? Is it going to be some, uh, some dirty building in the countryside, uh, sitting on, on some benches without any backs? I've seen courts like that in my country, and that really disturbed me. And as a result, we, I, I, I made sure I did my research. And as a result of that, things have started happening. Because I think that if you're going to administer justice, it's important to administer it also in a nice setting, a reasonable setting, a respectful setting, so that it's not as though you're just throwing some crumbs to some people who don't matter. Because for some of them, it took them a lot of courage to be able to bring that uh, little case of theirs to the court. They are scared of courts anyway. And, um, and therefore, though you're not going to turn it into uh, a, a party for them, still, there has to be a certain uh, concept of respect. Because you're going to administer justice, you must administer it in circumstances which give sufficient gravitas to the process. Try and make it as simplified as possible by keeping all the necessary procedural uh, essentials that will, uh, 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 that will assure standardization, that will assure that it's not a uh, I, 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 there's no predictability. There has to be predictability, not in necessarily the outcome, but in 
the process integrity. And so one of my missions, I feel, is to ensure that by the time I retire, I'm retiring in December. <laughs> by the time I retire, at least in every region of Ghana, there will be the beginnings of, of repaired courtrooms, repaired or rebuilt court buildings. Of course, court buildings are not what make the, 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 the law or the justice, but you need to package things nicely. And so that's going to be one of my missions. At the same time, we're living in the technology age, and I believe that to the extent that um, in a remote village, just outside the courtroom, there's somebody who is standing there using a mobile phone. It means there's connection. And therefore, it is possible to bring technology into the services that we're providing in the countryside. We've, we've already started, and um, I know that it will continue. And what we plan is that by 2022, by 2022, all the regional high courts will be linked. And by 2025, all courts across the country will be technologically linked. For me, the most important thing why I focus on the lower courts is that as a Supreme Court judge for, for 20 years before I became Chief Justice, sometimes you looked at the, the, the record of appeal and the case started eight years ago, 10 years ago from the lower court and climbed, 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 climbed and took such a long time to get to the Supreme Court for the final uh, say of what the judges have to say. And it's important then that the, even the appeal process be speeded up. And technology is no longer a mystery. Technology, every day something new happens. And uh, just um, in May, we commenced a new linked uh, high court for 43 high courts where everything is paperless. We're going to spread that paperless system also throughout the country within the time that I'm talking about. And it is possible on that platform even to use uh, mobile money, which is very popular in Ghana, all over the place, to file court cases and uh, to file, to pay for your filing. You, everything can be done either by your mobile phone or by going to a business center and filing online. I believe that uh, hate talks and the people we have interacted with this afternoon, especially the innovation in justice uh, delivery, is going to be something we are going to take a very close look at what they do, because we can use some of the innovations to even sweeten the um, justice processes as much as possible. Justice is something that is, at the end of the day, should be a quality product. And when it is delivered, it should have, it should have effective outcomes. And the, the effectiveness of the outcome depends also on the reliability of the process. Using technology helps to improve the reliability and assure the reliability of the outcomes. Of course, that will never take away the human beings, the judges, and the court staff, who also must be very, very well resourced at all material times to be able to deliver that quality justice. And um, I do believe that maybe 30 years ago, this would be only a possibility in what was then called the advanced countries. But these days, there are no advanced countries and non-advanced countries. It's all a question of to what extent you are allowing technology and all the other 
modern uh, resources of modernity, how you're allowing it to work for you, how you're also allowing jurisprudence, borrowing jurisprudence across the board. In, in, yes, today in our discussion and yesterday in our discussions, we all came to the conclusion that the gap between international law and domestic law uh, is gradually closing, yes, because international law at the end of the day was developed by people for people. Domestic law was also developed for people for people. And, and therefore, what matters is how just the outcomes are. And uh, already in my country, we, we borrow copiously, we borrow liberally from, from, from the international sphere, from another country, from within the African uh, system. And what matters is that at the end of the day, it is justice that you are administering. And as for justice, there's no Dutch justice, there's no uh, Ghanaian justice, there's no Sierra Union justice. Justice is for people, and justice is justice. And that is the ultimate, um, the ultimate litmus test. Because we can't do without justice if we want law and order. We can't do without justice if we want peace and development. Without justice, we cannot have that. So these are some of the things I have to say. Thank you very much.